The decisions, plans, and procedures to guide the transition are outlined in the so-called migration plan. The migration plan specifies what activities will be performed, when and by whom, as the transition is made from the old to the new system. Also, so-called business contingency plans should be made to ensure that the business can continue its operations even in the event of technical glitches with the new system. These are the issues that must be incorporated into the migration plan. What activities will be performed when and by whom? This includes technical aspects, such as installing the hardware and software and converting data, and organizational aspects, such as training users on the system, as well as motivating employees to use the new system to aid in their work. Here are the elements of a migration plan. The process by which the new system is introduced into the organization is called a conversion strategy. Different aspects of introducing the system must be considered. For example, how abruptly the change is made, the conversion style, the organizational span of the introduction, conversion locations, and the extent of the system that is introduced, conversion modules. It's also necessary to have a business contingency plan. The business contingency plan must deal with things that can go wrong during the conversion. What do we do if things go very wrong during, during conversion? For example, there could be technical glitches that might occur. The question is relevant, is the old system still available? And if not, how do we keep the business running if we have a problem? Can manual procedures be used for a short time? The business contingency plan must enable the organization to be prepared for the worst case scenario. Think about the consequences of being unable to operate normally, lost sales, unhappy customers. How would the organization stay afloat? So here we begin to look at conversion strategies, which um, encompass both conversion style, conversion locations, and conversion modules. Now, conversion style refers to the abruptness of the switch from the old system to the new system. The most abrupt change is termed a direct conversion and involves an immediate contemporaneous replacement of the old system with the new system. That is, the old system is turned off on one day and the new system is turned on on the next. Direct conversion is simple and straightforward, but it is also risky as problems with the new system that have not been detected during testing can seriously disrupt the, uh, the abilities the organization's ability to, to function. This slide basically repeats what we just said about conversion styles, um, but it explains a little further about parallel conversion. With parallel co conversion, both the old and the new systems are used simultaneously for a period of time. Parallel conversion reduces the risk by providing a fallback position if major problems should occur. The location of the conversion is also a relevant consideration for conversion strategies. That is, the new system can be introduced to different parts of the organization at different times, or it can be introduced throughout the organization at the same time. A, a so-called pilot conversion selects one or more locations, that is, units or work groups within a location, to be converted first as a part of a pilot test. If the conversion at the pilot location is successful, then the system is installed at the remaining locations. With a so-called phase conversion, a first set of locations is converted, then a second set, then a third set, and so on, until all locations are converted. And finally, with a simultaneous conversion, all locations are converted at the same time. 